A portable sawmill provides great opportunities for landholders who grow trees to produce their own timber for use or sale. This video will show you a standard procedure for producing quarter sawn borns from such a tree. Let's review pruning methods that allow us to create trees with useful saw logs. Rowan is using a pole saw to prune these trees for saw logs up to a height of 6 metres. This is because branches that are left to grow in the tree will cause knots in the wood which weaken the timber. Branches are pruned off the trunk anywhere that it is greater than 8 centimetres in diameter. This restricts knot formation to the centre of the log and means that the trees are pruned in proportion to their size. As the trunk grows in diameter, the new wood will grow over where the branch was and the new wood will not have any knots, as shown here. The cut of the mill in relation to the grain orientation of the timber can generate either back sawn or quarter sawn boards. These boards have different properties depending on the grain orientation. Quarter sawing produces boards with their faces parallel to the ray cells. This produces a more visually attractive timber to most woodworkers and therefore the value of the timber is increased. It also potentially shows off fiddleback grain in the wood which is highly valued by instrument makers and cabinet makers. As trees grow, they are subject to growth stresses. Hardwood trees form tension wood in response to environmental factors such as wind. When milling, one needs to trim off the outer edges of a log to relax these stresses. This will minimise bending and warping of the finished products. This video will show you the procedure of cuts which you can use to maximise the product recovered from your portable sawmill. It should also show you how easy it is to use a portable sawmill with only one person and the pattern of cuts which you can use. When milling, larger diameter saw logs are desirable as the finished timber warps less compared with smaller diameter logs of the same species. The first step will be to cut off the edges of the saw log to relieve the tension. We can adjust the height of the blade with the crank arm on the portable sawmill so we're not cutting off too much of the product we aim to recover. Rowan easily rotates the saw log to cut off each edge. Once all four edges have been cut off, we will be ready to back saw our first slab from the saw log. These back sawn slabs will then be further cut into quarter sawn boards, which show off the grain of the timber and are worth more per cubic metre than back sawn boards. Here we see the mill finishing its first back cut slab and the saw log releasing some of its tension. Yeah, true. So that's the outside's in tension forces the centre into compression. I'm cutting off one side of the log so this actually the top end shortens so that it ends into a banana that way. That's not very much because remember now I'm going to turn it around and cut that way so it's no problem. But importantly, the rest of the log is actually also moved. Not so much because it's got the, the centre in it. So this is now, we've re it would have been far less had I done that cut through there while keeping all that tension on the outside as well. happy that I'm going to get good lengths of pretty clear wood, certainly no knots, and these little things, let's hope they look artistic rather than like a defect. <laughs> you can see the back sawn cut, those kino rings get splattered out across the face.
So this I want as much usable wood as I can. Some of the boards, I look at this side, will have some, a little bit of defect. Some of them will have a little bit of sapwood. But that is all heartwood in there. So these first boards will be solid heartwood and pretty clean. I think they'll be, uh, they'll be worth them. The way I describe what's happening and see how this description works and tell me whether it improves, but you've all seen plastic wrap on cardboard boxes. Take a cardboard box, stick it through plastic wrap, shrink wrap, tie it around the box. One layer, the outside's in tension, the box holds it by being in compression. Imagine if you put 10 layers of shrink wrap on. Each layer would have the same amount of tension, but the compression on the box would be 10 times greater. The box is actually just going to collapse. It'll crush under all that. You actually see that in the center of trees. And it's probably it's not evident here, but we call it brittle heart. The wood in the center of the tree has just been crushed by the tension. The cell structure has been smashed by all that tension on the outside. It's like it's been affected by fungus. It's just corky rubbish, but there may not be any fungus in there. Here we see that there has been fungal attack. I cut the branch, the fungus has got in, it's run back down to the branch, to the centre, and now it's travelling up and down the centre of the tree. All that discoloration is rot that actually arose as a result of pruning that large branch, you see? And there's another large branch down here, it also brought the rot in. That sounds like pruning was a disaster, it introduced rot. But you can see, or you should be able to pick up, that after the branch itself is rotten, but the wood that formed over the top is totally sound. The tree has very good defences. So, as I said, there's, there's that and that and down to here. That is just straight firewood. And if I stuck it in a board, it would bend and warp, and there's rotten wood and there's branch stubs. That's what we call the knotty core, the waste core. It's also got juvenile wood, wood that was formed when the tree was young, low in wood density, high fibre angle, bends and twists. So that is the waste part. We've got waste in the middle, we've got the sapwood on the outside. So it's a tricky way of milling to try and get the wood out of that part of the, the tree that's in that cylinder. So I'm going to take off the rest and then I'm into, into just the good wood. Now that we've finished back sawing the slabs, we can get down to quarter sawing the boards from these slabs to generate our usable product. The crank arm and ruler provided with the mill allow us to fine tune the height of our blade for sawing our board. Before we saw each board, a few mil must be taken off as the boards still may warp as they release tension. Once you have the hang of this procedure, it is very easy to start cutting high value quarter sawn boards from trees grown on your property. Once you have finished cutting your boards, they should be stacked in a cool shady area and allowed to slowly air dry so the timber does not crack and warp. The boards can also be kiln dried to further value add to your product. We hope you now feel like you can take trees on your property and mill them into usable timber and encourage you to visit our website for more of these educational videos. Thank you very much.